Space. Robots. Aliens. Hyper-advanced technology. Maybe a series like Star Trek or Stargate or Star Wars. Or maybe a famous book like Ender's Game. Science fiction is a massively popular global genre, so I imagine all of us have at least an idea of what science fiction is. However, for a class on the subject of science fiction, an idea isn't going to cut it. In today's lecture, we're going to explore the definitions of science fiction, what science fiction is. Let's start with the name. While scholars, authors, historians, and fans have largely decided on keeping the science fiction moniker, in the early days, authors and readers used several different terms to describe the genre. For example, Jules Verne's called his novels books like 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, Journey to the Center of the Earth, and From Earth to the Moon, Voyage Extraordinaires, or Extraordinary Voyages. H.G. Wells preferred the title Scientific Romances for his novels, like The Time Machine, War of the Worlds, and The Island of Dr. Moreau. Romance here doesn't mean a love story, but refers to chivalric romance, a genre of fantastical adventures in medieval and Renaissance literature. Another early term was science fantasy. Now, this term isn't used too much anymore, but it may signal what you might recognize as a close relationship between science fiction and fantasy. Many people think they're part of the same generic mode. In fact, if you go into a bookstore, you'll probably find a sci-fi and fantasy book section in which sci-fi and fantasy books share the same space. One of the earlier monikers used for science fiction that is still used today is speculative fiction. Here, the emphasis is on imagining what if over science. Some authors today prefer this label to science fiction. Others use the term to describe works that aren't quite sci-fi, but are still speculative that is, works guessing or imagining a different future or past. For this class, we are focusing on science fiction. As a side note, I will frequently abbreviate science fiction to sci-fi when speaking uh, and to SF or sci-fi in writing. Well, on the one hand, we might intuitively know what science fiction is. On the other hand, nailing down the particulars is actually surprisingly difficult. I've already referred to science fiction as a genre, but not everyone might be familiar with that term. A genre is a way of categorizing works of art, including but not limited to literature. Genre is one of three terms that tend to appear when discussing categories of literature, along with form and mode. Form is the broadest of these categories and refers to the basic structure of a work of art. As such, it is largely synonymous with medium. Writing or literature is a form of art, as opposed to painting or film. However, we can also discuss forms within literature. Again, these are the broadest structural categories, like prose, poetry, and drama. Even within prose, you can have forms like a novel or a short story. The important thing to remember is that forms have little to do with the content of the work of art, only with its basic format. Mode and genre are a little more difficult to separate. A mode describes a literary method or mood that is not tied to a specific form or genre. Some examples are the satiric mode, the didactic mode, or the ironic mode. Modes can work across forms and genres. For example, a science fiction novel and a romance film can both use the satiric mode. Modes are generally defined by their content rather than their form, but that content isn't so much related to plot details, archetypal characters, or settings. A mode is more closely connected to the mood or tone of a work of art. Now, most people categorize science fiction as a genre. A genre is a style or a category of writing defined by different factors such as content, tone, and technique. In literary theory, genre is a rather complicated term. In his book, Genre, John Frow writes that genre is a set of conventional and highly organized constraints of the production and interpretation of meaning. He goes on to argue that genre is not simply a restriction. Rather, its structuring effects are productive of meaning they shape and guide. What Frau means is that genre only exists when readers understand the characteristics and conventions of a genre. That is, when readers share certain knowledge with the author about a genre.
That knowledge in turn helps readers make sense of the text. For example, in a traditional Western film, we know that the cowboy in the black hat will probably be a villain because that is the convention of Western film. The author will assume that readers are familiar with this convention and play on that expectation, either to fulfill it or subvert it. Science fiction is generally considered a genre, but not everyone agrees. For example, in the Cambridge Introduction to Science Fiction, Farrah Mendelssohn says that science fiction is a mode and not a genre. She makes a few compelling points, namely arguing that sci-fi is not so tied to plot details or archetypal characters as it is to a shared sense of wonder across many texts. I find her argument compelling, though I don't agree with it completely. I've uploaded the file on Canvas if you'd like to read it, but it's not required. Regardless, science fiction is most often thought of as a genre. That begs the question. So, what defines sci-fi as a genre? Well, everyone has an opinion. Wikipedia argues that science fiction is a genre of fiction dealing with imaginative content, but those imaginary elements are largely plausible within the scientifically established context of the story. John Litzer, a science fiction author and magazine editor, says that sci-fi is fiction based on the factual and scientific knowledge, plus the infinite speculative possibilities based upon that knowledge. Farrah Mendelssohn, who we discussed earlier, not only said that science fiction is a mode and not a genre, but also described it as an ongoing discussion. Science fiction author James Gunn said that science fiction is the branch of literature that deals with the effect of change on people in the real world as it can be projected into the past, the future, or distant places. Lester Del Rey, another science fiction author and also a famous publisher, said that science fiction is fiction that deals rationally with alternate possibilities. One of the most famous science fiction authors of all time, Isaac Asimov, argued that science fiction stories are extraordinary voyages into any of the infinite supply of conceivable futures. Finally, Joanna Russ, who we'll be reading a little bit later, writes, science fiction is what-if literature. It shows things not as they characteristically or habitually are, but as they might be. And for this might be, the author must offer a rational, consistent explanation. Perhaps my favorite definition of science fiction, though, one of the clearest and most versatile, comes from Darko Suvin, a scholar who has written extensively on science fiction. In his article on the poetics of the science fiction genre, he argues that science fiction is the literature of cognitive estrangement. Estrangement refers to the parts of science fiction genre that we most easily recognize, the strange and wondrous contraptions, and alien races, and other worlds. Suvin writes that estrangement is, quote, an interest in strange newness, and that that interest, quote, allows us to recognize its subject, but at the same time makes it seem unfamiliar. But Suvin argues that estrangement alone is not enough to define science fiction because other genres like fantasy, fairy tales, myth, and horror all use some kind of estrangement, to fill the reader with wonder, fear, or awe. What separates science fiction is that estrangement is cognitive. It engages with our cognition. Cognition refers to how we gain and process knowledge of the world around us. In some ways, cognitive could refer to the science and estrangement to fiction. Thus, Steven argues cognitive estrangement, quote, does not only imply a reflecting of, but also on reality. It implies a creative approach tending toward a dynamic transformation rather than toward a static mirroring of the author's environment. So in short, Suvin argues that science fiction is a way of relearning our world and ourselves through the imaginative and wondrous details of far-off places, times, and people. Even shorter, science fiction is a way of knowing. Our reading this week is another attempt to define science fiction, this time by a sci-fi author most famous for her work in the 70s named Joanna Russ. We'll even be reading one of her stories later in the term. See you next time.